Hello, I'm Jonathan Kopp and I'm with Alina Duplinski, who is the partner and leader of energy and industry at Pillsbury Law. Alina, thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. Well, we're now at the time of recording into the final few days of COP, so I'm just wondering what are your hopes and your expectations for how COP will turn out? Absolutely. So I think this has been a historic COP in many ways. Uh, of course, for nuclear industry uh, and for nuclear energy globally, the fact that we have this pledge to triple nuclear capacity uh, by 2050, uh, signed by 22 countries and counting, and very prominently featured here at the COP, um, I think is, is really tremendous is very, and very important uh, because without that government support, Right, nothing can happen. Industry can do things by themselves. You can have, you know, activists calling for for change, uh, but you really need to have governments come out and say, we have a very specific target, a specific goal. Um, and we've seen that, of course, across uh, the spectrum. It's not only in nuclear. We're seeing that in renewables. We're seeing that with the pledge to uh, to reduce cooling-related emissions. Uh, various industries, you know, methane being tackled. So it's really been done. You know, energy transition, decarbonization across the board. Um, so now we've gotten to this level that's very historic. Uh, I think the next question is how do we actually implement it? Uh, so i already seeing in the SCOP projects being announced. Uh, you see a lot of industry here, much more than last year. I was in Charm last year and I think already had a very heavy industry involvement that you typically wouldn't see. Uh, I think this year it's a lot more and kind of across the spectrum, right, big oil and gas companies, of course, the nuclear industry very well represented, startups, uh, you know, supply chain, everyone is here uh, because industry, one sees an opportunity right to uh, really act on some of these pledges but a lot of industries also under pressure to do it right especially the uh, the industries that generate a lot of carbon so despite the fact they may come here and they may have ministers directing kind of some harsh comments to them they show up because they think it's important so you know my hope is that you know all of these kind of initial MOUs that are signed, you know, some project announcements, you know, that are done kind of early level. Uh, I hope that this COP will generate, you know, real action. So these MOUs will turn into contracts, the projects will become real, uh, we will create new supply chains, we will create, you know, actual new industries, uh, for example, with advanced reactors, right? It's something been in the play for a long time, but we're now starting to see sites. Uh, we're starting to see, you know, kind of real players come together. So I'm really hopeful that by the time we're at the next COP in Baku, uh, we will be able to say not only do we have pledges and we have MOUs, but here's this project that started construction. Uh, you know, here's a real supply chain that that's you know that's been formed uh, to create this. Uh, you know, here's some, some th act real actions happening on the ground. So that's that's my hope, uh, and we can talk next year and see if it happens. Oh, indeed. So actually, I'd like to pick up on that point. So looking at the ministerial declaration that there was in the strategy, I wonder if you had any thought, further thoughts on, on what that signified, but also perhaps. I could ask beyond Baku, what is it that needs to be done in order to reach that goal, that tripling goal that the ministries have said? Absolutely. So, uh, you know, the pledge is certainly historic for, for you know, for the reasons that, that I outlined before. Some of the countries are, you know, kind of historic supporters of nuclear energy, but we have, for example, Belgium that took the lead right on supporting nuclear and calling for the tripling of capacity belgium just two years ago had a policy to decommission its entire existing nuclear fleet which provides 50 percent of their energy capacity so you know that type of uh, turnaround for a country is it is really important and it's historic and there are other countries that of course are even kind of further down uh you know the, the level of support for nuclear like like you know like germany and austria but even you know being here you're seeing people calling for those countries to change those policies as well. So I think having a pledge by these governments almost starts a kind of a snowball effect, right, where other governments will join in because they realize that, you know, maybe they don't want to be the outlier uh, and they are being viewed as, you know, not putting the actions forward to, to uh, kind of reach their, their climate change decarbonization goals. 
Um, to your second question on the action, right? So, so I talked about the role of industry. That's very important. You know, industry has to do the right thing. Um, in nuclear specifically, you know, we really have to figure out a way to build on time and on budget. And we've figured out how to do that in, in certain parts of the world. We're sitting right here in the UAE. I've had the immense pleasure working and, and a, you know, an, an honor working on the Baraka project. And the UAE did everything it needed to do. Uh, together with, the, with their Korean partners to ensure that that project was on time and on budget. And now we have, you know, four operational reactors here. Other regions of the world have done it, so it's doable, but we really need to think about how to make that across the board, right? Whether, you know, we, whether it's, you know, private industry taking part in bringing in more experienced players uh, to you know, direct and manage some of these projects that, you know, we haven't had that before. Um, you know, whatever it is we need to do, industry needs to do that. But I think also, in addition to a pledge that, you know, that government can make, government support is really essential for nuclear, especially if we're going to have this, you know, very fast paced um, um, uh, rollout of, of nuclear, right? I mean, the pledge means that we need to put in 30 gigawatts of nuclear each year for 26 years, right, till 2050. And today we're putting in five gigawatts. Most of it is coming from one country, China. Um, so, you know, it really needs to be kind of the case across the board. And I think without multilateral solutions, that's very difficult to do. Uh, most governments cannot do this by themselves. Uh, it's a very tall task. And I think we need to have multilateral solutions formed. One that I'm working on, for example, is the International Bank for Nuclear Infrastructure uh, that really seeks to be the catalyst uh, to reach these net zero goals, filling in the gaps that currently in, in exist in nuclear finance, uh, and bringing global finance in to, to support nuclear projects, to invest in nuclear projects, and to lend to nuclear projects, which we currently don't have. Um, there are other efforts, uh, for example, I've been working with the Clean Air Task Force on this international technical support organization that would come and fill in the gaps in regulatory capability for nuclear newcomer countries, of which there, there are quite a few. Um, so these types of multilateral efforts, but also regional efforts, it can make sense for countries to cooperate regionally to share the capabilities they already have and develop the capabilities jointly because projects may be developed at different times. Um, and capacity, human resource capacity is constrained for a lot of things, but especially for nuclear. Um, so I think, you know, in general, you kind of see the world moving away a little bit from globalism and into uh, a bit of protectionism. Um, and I think for nuclear, you know, really multilateralism is very important in order to create these actionable um, uh, initiatives uh, that can truly achieve net zero goals. Absolutely. We're all going to have to work together to make this happen. Alina Toplinski, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me.